Thank you for volunteering. We appreciate your help. Thank you. Thank you for your support. We appreciate your help. Thank you for volunteering. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank you for volunteering. We're glad you're with us. Hi, thanks for voting. Yeah. Don't forget your I voted sticker, it's the most important part. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Neil Kelly, Registrar of Voters. I'm proud to be the Chief Elections Official for Orange County and honored to serve as your Registrar of Voters. Your Election Day journey begins right here. This training video is designed as an aid to assist you in helping us to run a successful election. Elections can be exciting, and by the way, there's a lot to be excited about. You have among your ranks a diverse group, from young to old, novice to experienced. I'm confident each of you will do a great job. We're also using technology to train in the most compelling way possible. You'll find ways to explore subjects in more depth as you watch. Just visit the Explore More options at the bottom of your screen. We want you to become an active learner. What I hope you take away after watching this video is the big picture of how a polling place should operate. At the same time, we've listened to you and increased some levels of detail for you. All of it designed to give you quality training, improve your experience, and make volunteering fun and enjoyable. Okay, so enough of the introductions, let's get right to it. And oh, one last thing. I've had the pleasure of meeting hundreds of you at your polling places on election day. I hope to see you at the next election. Hello, I'm Dave and I'll be one of your hosts for this training video. We'll be covering several key pieces of training material essential to get you through Election Day successfully. Each chapter will take you through in-depth training on our most important topics. Let's start at the distribution center, where the inspectors pick up their supplies. After having attended training, inspectors must pick up their polling place supplies before Election Day. Your assigned pickup time and location will be mailed to you with your poll worker pass welcome packet. If you would rather pick up your supplies early, you may schedule an appointment via your online poll worker pass account. Your distribution center may be busy. There may already be a line of cars when you arrive at your center. Stay in your vehicle and wait for assistance as a safety precaution. At the distribution center, please be prepared to provide your poll worker pass card and place your precinct number on your dashboard. Hi. Hi, good morning. How you doing? Doing great. Yourself? Good, good. Do you have your poll worker pass card with you? Sure do. Right there. Five, two, zero, four, five. It'll be just a minute while we get your supplies for okay. you. Okay. You will receive the following. The JBC, or Judge's Booth Controller, an inspector supply pickup envelope that includes letter from registrar of voters, inspector checklist, notice to inspectors, and JBC Chain of Custody. Some of you may also receive a supplemental roster, vote by mail list, and ADA instructions. A large supply box with a supply checklist inside. One of the items you will find is a cell phone. Be sure to charge it before election day. Outside signposts and a plastic bag with your electrical equipment. It is necessary for some polling places to be equipped with tools to accommodate voters with disabilities in compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, also known as ADA. Most ADA equipment is delivered and set up by the Registrar of Voters. Depending on your polling place, you may also be picking up a few items to accommodate voters with disabilities. The inspector should verify they have received all of their materials by doing an inventory against the checklist of supplies found in the supply box. 
Inspectors, remember to document the total number of paper ballots received on the front of your roster. Be sure to secure the supplies by reapplying the seal on the front of the supply box. Remember, keep all of these items in your possession so you have everything you need on Election Day. Hi there, I'm Heather, the co-host of this video. In this section, we'll be discussing the advantages of setting up your polling place before Election Day. The Register of Voters encourages inspectors to communicate with their polling place and board members ahead of time to see if it's possible to set up before Election Day. This way you can familiarize yourself with the polling place and meet your poll workers. You can also prepare the voting booths and hang your inside signs. Hello, my name's Heather. I'll be the inspector of the polling place located at your facility on Election Day. Hello Heather, my name is Mary Ann. What can I do for you? Well, as you know, we'll be arriving at your facility at 6 a.m. on election morning, and the polling place will open promptly at 7 a.m. Would you be willing to allow us to set up the day before Election Day in order to ensure that the polling place opens on time? Sure, I would be happy to help. What time would you like to set up? Please note, the voting booths assigned to your polling place will be delivered within 10 days of the election, and some may be delivered the day before. Do not bring the JBC, paper ballots, or combined roster index to the polling place for early setup. They must remain in a secure place under your control until you drop them off at the collection center on election night. Although we ask polling places to accommodate early setup, there are some locations that may not be able to provide early access. If for some reason you cannot set up early, your team will still have time to set up by arriving no later than 6 a.m. on election morning. Remember, preparing the polling place for voting is everyone's responsibility. It's important to work as a team to get everything done. When setting up your polling place, first create a plan for laying out your table, booths, and signs. You will find all of your signs in the supply box. Please post all signs as required by law. Post the large consolidated poster where voters can clearly read it. Do not hang it behind the booths. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with what is on the sign. Then, post your precinct map where it is accessible to you and the voters. All of the outdoor signs can only be posted on election morning. Keep in mind, we should only use the masking tape provided to put up signs. Using duct tape could ruin the walls or paint of the facility. And remember, always respect the polling place facility. Voting electronically has become more popular over the years and is a preferred method for many voters. In this section, we will be discussing setting up the electronic voting booths, also known as e-booths. An e-booth houses the electronic e-slate that voters use to cast their ballot. It is important to decide on an arrangement for the e-booths before setting them up. The Registrar of Voters requires that all booths that have been delivered must be set up. Let the size and shape of your polling place as well as location of outlets guide you. Your setup should allow poll workers to monitor e-booths to prevent tampering. Locate the combination for the caddy lock on the inspector's checklist. Remember to verify the integrity of the seals and sign the e-booth chain of custody document for the first time. Here is how to complete the e-booth chain of custody. The e-booth chain of custody will be found in a plastic pouch on the front of your e-booth caddy. The first two sections of the e-booth chain of custody document will be filled out by the delivery vendor and polling place operator when the equipment arrives. If you set up before election day, complete the early setup before election day section of the e-booth chain of custody. Remember, for more information, you may refer to your polling place operations manual on election day. At the end of the night, return the completed e-booth chain of custody document to the plastic pouch. The Disabled Access Unit, or DAO eBooth, must be placed at the opposite end of the JBC. 
The DAO is the only booth with battery backup, which allows it to be detached from the chain of booths and carried outside to accommodate a curbside voter who is unable to enter the polling place. Carefully place each e-booth in the place that you intend to use them, with the legs facing up and the handle facing the wall. You can set up an e-booth in five simple steps. Directions for setting up the e-booths can be found on the e-booths and in your polling place operations manual. Step 1. Legs. Slide all four legs out until the tips of the black arrows on each leg meet and the button clicks into place. Secure the rear leg brace together by locking the pin in place. Next, attach the four leg extensions. Again, ensure the button for each leg extension clicks into place. Extend the foot tubes and lock them in place. This is an important point because these booths can fall over if they are set up incorrectly. Here is the incorrect view of the foot tubes when they are not extended and the correct view of the extended foot tubes. The front of the foot tubes must face the front of the booth, the side with the handle. Step 2. Lift. The e-booth may now be moved into a standing position. Have two poll workers gently roll the e-booth on its back and then lift it up and forward. Step 3. Lid and lock. Remove the blue seal and place it on the back of the e-slate chain of custody document. Raise the lid, making sure to lock the hinge in place. It's important to make sure the hinge is locked so the lid does not fall and injure someone. Step 4. Power. Once the e-booths are standing, connect the power cables for the e-booth printers. Be careful of the hinge when removing the converter. Please do not drop the black power converter. If a power converter is dropped, it may render the e-booth inoperable. Handle it with care. The power converter should be removed from the Velcro and placed on the floor behind the booth Velcro side down. Plug each power converter into the power strip, or straight into a wall outlet if necessary, and the power strip into the wall outlet on election morning. If setting up the night before, do not plug anything in, including the power strip. Step 5. Daisy Chain. Connect the e-slates together with the gray data cables found in the top compartment inside each booth. Remove the gray data cable from the booth closest to the official table and plug it directly into the next e-slate in the line of booths. Each additional e-slate will be connected to the next e-slate in line. We are now connecting each data cable into the top of the e-slate, not the back of the booth. Stickers have been applied to the e-booths to guide you. This method of connection will reduce equipment failure on election day. You may still experience some minor equipment problems. The What to Do If Guide in your Polling Place Operations Manual can assist you in troubleshooting any electronic issues. However, if the problem is not quickly and easily resolved, please call the help desk so that the Registrar of Voters can decide how to best solve any problems. Not everything has gone electronic. In addition to the e-booths, we do have accommodations for voters who want to vote using paper ballots. When you first get to your polling place, the cardboard booths will be folded up. When building a booth, feel free to ask another clerk to help you out. Can I get some help? Please ensure that one of your cardboard booths is set up with the shelf at the lower level for voters that wish to sit while voting. Instructions are provided on the cardboard booth and you may also use your polling place operations manual as a reference. Notice that instructions to voters for completing their paper ballot are printed on the walls of the booth. Be sure to place a pen, provided in the supply box, inside each booth. If you have a number of paper ballot voters throughout the day, it is a good idea to look inside the booths to ensure that they are clean and ready for the next voter. In this section, we'll discuss arriving at the polling place and what to do if you have any trouble getting in. Remember, all poll workers must be at their assigned polling place no later than 6 a.m. 
As we discussed, it is highly recommended to come the day before to set up your e-booths. If you are unable to set up early, you will need the entire hour to prepare. Please turn on the cell phone provided to you and keep it on all day. If you're unable to get into your polling place or there's some other trouble with the location, call the help desk number listed on your poll worker pass and in your polling place operations manual. If you are unable to enter the polling place or if your electronic voting system is not running by 7 a.m., you can still process voters by issuing paper ballots. Have the voters sign the roster, provide them with their proper ballot and pen. You must call the help desk if you are missing any poll workers, especially a bilingual poll worker whose skills are likely required at your polling place by the Federal Voting Rights Act. Good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning. This is the day. You ready? Yes, we're ready. Yes. Okay, where's Lena? Oh, I haven't seen her yet this morning. morning. No. no. That won't do. Okay, we'll take care of that. Okay. Hi. Yeah, this is Dave. I'm down at the Laguna Beach Precinct. I'm the inspector. And I find myself short one bilingual poll worker. Laguna Beach. Terrific. Thanks a lot. Covered. Only our office can make the final determination on staffing. Call the help desk. We've made it to election morning. Today will be an exciting and busy day. Now, the first duty of all poll workers on election morning is to take the oath of office. And don't forget to sign the oath and payroll sheet. This document is located inside the combined roster index. Verify all information is correct to ensure timely payment. I do hereby solemnly declare. I do hereby solemnly declare that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Use the quick setup guide as a reference for setting up the official table, booths, and posting signs. You must place the empty ballot box behind the official table where the voter can clearly see it, but not touch it. State law requires that the Voter Bill of Rights posters, including those provided in our covered languages, are accessible to the voters. These must be posted outside the polling place. To set the boundary where electioneering or campaigning is prohibited, hang the polling place 100 feet sign approximately 100 feet from the entrance of the voting room. Taking about 30 large steps from the door should suffice. This will give you a general idea of the space you will be monitoring for political dialogues or symbolism on t-shirts, hats, signs, or bumper stickers. If in doubt, Make a call to the help desk. Always be polite in educating people that these items are not allowed within 100 feet. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't have any electioneering on your clothing inside of a polling place. You'll have to go outside and turn your shirt inside out and then you can come back in, okay? Sorry about that. Help guide the voters to find your polling place by strategically posting your directional signs. Be sure the arrows are directing voters toward the polling place entrance. Hang the flag outside the entrance of the polling place. The flag must be hung with the stars in the upper left corner. Use the disabled access sign to indicate the most accessible entrance to persons with disabilities. Hang two precinct street indexes in an area where poll workers can see them and the public has access to them. Place the third copy on the official table. The street index warning posted on the front of each index advises the public that they're not allowed to remove the indexes from the polling place. The ideal setup is using two or more tables. However, most polling places will only have one table to work with. The official table should include the combined roster index, a precinct street index, pens, ballot cards, volunteer sign-up sheet, JBC, paper ballots, secrecy folders, telephone referral card, provisional ballot envelopes, voter registration forms, and, if applicable, a write-in candidate list. Voters sign in with the roster and street index clerks and proceed to the ballot clerk to receive a ballot. Coming up next, we'll discuss opening the polls on the JBC.
One of the most crucial aspects of the electronic voting system is the judge's booth controller, also known as the JBC. I'll take you through how to open the polls on the JBC. Before we begin setting up the JBC, all of your e-booths should be already arranged and daisy-chained. Step 1. Plug in. Make sure that your e-booth printers are plugged in and the power strip is plugged in and turned on. Remove the JBC from its case. You'll find a black power cord, gray data cable, and an envelope with the password to open and close the polls. Step 2. JBC eBooth Connection. Complete your first seal verification process for the JBC Chain of Custody document. In order to plug into the port, you will need to remove the blue seal covering the red port on the back of the JBC. Place the seal on the back of the JBC Chain of Custody document. After you've connected the gray data cable in the red connector of the JBC, plug the black end of the gray data cable into the top of the e-slate inside the booth closest to the JBC. Step 3. JBC Power Connection. Now you can plug in the black power cord and make sure the JBC powers up. Then plug in the battery backup key. Place the key lightly up to the receptor and turn it until it fits. Then tighten the collar around the key to hold it in place. The battery backup must be plugged in for the JBC to switch to battery power if there's an interruption in power. Step 4. Assign. The first screen you see when you power up will ask you to assign eBooth numbers. You do this by pressing the Enter button on each eSlate, beginning with the eSlate closest to the JBC and ending with the DAO. Press Done on the JBC after all eBooths have been assigned. Press the arrow next to the Next on the JBC. Unfold the privacy screen on each booth and clip them in place. You will receive a prompt to print your zero tape. This important step is often missed. Please refer to your quick setup takedown guide or your polling place operations manual when opening the polls. Print the zero tape by pressing the arrow next to the print zero tape on the JBC. Leave the zero tape attached for the first voter to witness that no votes have been recorded on the JBC and have them sign it. The first voter will also confirm that the ballot box is empty before it is sealed. Place the zero tape inside the JBC main envelope where you will store other electronic reports throughout the day. If either of the power sources, AC or battery, does not read OK, check all of your connections. If you're unable to obtain power or if the pub count is not all zeros, call the help desk immediately. Step 5. Pub count. Notate the pub count of zero and the number of paper ballots your polling place has received on the front of the combined roster index. Step 6. Open polls. On the Ready to Open Poll screen, press the arrow next to Open Polls. On the next screen, enter the Polls Open password and press the arrow next to Accept. Even if it's before 7 a.m. on Election Day, you may open the polls on the JBC in preparation for the first voter, but you cannot begin processing voters or issuing access codes until 7 a.m. when the polls are open. If you follow these easy steps, you'll be up and running in no time. If any or all of the e-booths are not working, check all connections, including power. If you're unable to solve the problem, refer to the What to Do If guide found in the back of your polling place operations manual, or call the help desk. Now, a final word of caution. Do not attempt to solve a problem by closing the polls on the JBC. Once closed, Polls cannot be reopened on the JBC. Now that everything's set up, I think we're ready to process some voters. Let's begin. Processing voters is simple. Have the voter sign the combined roster index, verify the voter's address is accurate, and issue a ballot.
The roster clerk will complete the first step in processing the voter, locating the voter's name in the combined roster index. Hi, can I get your name please? Sure. Tim Patterson. All right. If I can just get you to sign your name right here next to the X. Of course. And please print your street address also right next to your name. Remember, if you do not see the voter in the active list, you must check the inactive and supplemental lists. The voter direction list may be used to locate the voter's precinct and the roster line number. This is particularly useful for polling places with more than one precinct, each with its own roster. The roster clerk will write the cross-reference number found next to the name on the ballot card as well as the voter's precinct number. Remember, for primary elections, you will also write their party preference. After filling out the ballot card, the roster clerk passes it to the street index clerk. Fantastic. Thank and if you you'll step right over here to the street index clerk. Hi, how's it going? The street index clerk will use the cross-reference number written on the ballot card to find the voter in the street index. The clerk will ask the voter to state their address. Once you verify the address is the same, cross out the voter's name. Can you go ahead and state your address when we please? Sure, 3035 Casper Place. Okay. All right, very good. Here you go. Go ahead and then give this to the paper ballot clerk. Thank okay. you very much. Every hour, one of the copies posted on the wall must be updated to match the desk copy. The last update will be at 6 p.m. Remember, you will mark off those who have voted, giving the public an opportunity to see who has voted. Throughout the day, poll monitors may review the street index that is posted by the door. Next, the ballot clerk will issue an access code for electronic voting, unless the voter states that they wish to vote using a paper ballot. I'm here actually to vote on paper today. Okay, great. Can I go ahead and get your address first, please? To process a paper ballot voter, the clerk will refer to the ballot card to issue the correct precinct ballot and, in a primary, their party preference. The paper ballot might be more than one page. The clerk must make sure the voter receives the entire ballot. Tell the voter that once completed, to fold the ballot in half and place in the secrecy folder and return to the official table. Direct the voter to an available cardboard booth. Thank you. Hello. Okay, you're going to vote paper today? Yes, please. Okay, what you'll do is, this is your ballot. In the booth over there, you'll see there will be pens. Please bubble in your answer. Do not check or exit. When you finish, this is a secrecy folder. It's for your privacy. When you finish, please bring your ballot folded in the envelope to me, and I will uh, deposit it in the box. Thank you very much. Okay. Once the voter returns, the poll worker will drop the paper ballot into the ballot box. By law, poll workers are the only persons allowed to place the ballots in the ballot box. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. If a voter using a paper ballot makes a mistake, you may issue a new ballot. They have three opportunities to complete their ballot error free. For instructions on handling spoiled ballots, please refer to your polling place operations manual. To process an electronic ballot, the clerk will use the ballot card to issue the correct precinct ballot and, in a primary, their party preference. The clerk will press the arrow next to the Add Voter on the JBC. At a polling place serving multiple precincts, the clerk will press the arrow next to the voter's precinct number. In a primary, the clerk will select the voter's party preference. If you can't find the voter's party, scroll to the next menu page of the JBC to see more options. To print an access code for a voter, press the arrow next to print. The ballot clerk will draw a line through the front of the ballot card to show it has been issued. The clerk will direct the voter to an available e-booth and the voter will use the access code to begin voting. Remind the voter that they are not finished voting until they see the waving American flag. You are. Okay. Go ahead to the next clerk. Hey, how are you today? Good, how are you? Good, thanks.
Okay, you're gonna follow the prompts on the screen. It's not a touch screen, and when you see the American flag waving, that means your boat is cast. There you go. Thank you. Have a good day. If you must cancel a booth, refer to the Polling Place Operations Manual. And if you still need help, call the help desk. In the next section, we will take you through processing provisional voters. Hello, Orange County poll workers. I thought it's important that I take the time to introduce you to the provisional procedures we use here in Orange County. You will learn what provisional voters are, the categories they may fall into, details about our new envelope, and more importantly, our improved procedures. We spent months designing a new program based on input from many of you. In fact, we assembled focus groups made up of poll workers to test these new procedures and made adjustments based on what we learned. I want to point out the significant changes designed to assist you in your polling place and make this a much easier process for voters. First, in the past we used two envelopes, one for regular provisional voters and one for those who did not have their vote by mail ballot to surrender. Now there's a single envelope for all provisional voters. Second, we used a separate roster that we asked voters to sign. We've eliminated the provisional roster. Everything we need is on the provisional envelope, including the voter's signature. Third, you no longer have to worry about writing down ballot codes for voters to use to access the status of their ballot. We've provided a feature on our website that allows provisional voters to check the status of their ballot. The receipt you will tear off of the envelope has the instructions the voters need to access this service. Finally, we've separated the voter registration process from the provisional process. As you can see, I'm a proud evangelist when it comes to the benefits of our simplified voting provisional process. Please pay close attention as you learn these updated procedures. And thank you for your attention. What's better about the provisional voting process? A lot. Let's take a quick look. These are exciting changes designed to make it easier on you and the voters. Now there's only one envelope. In the past, you had to worry about two. No more. No matter the type of provisional voter, you just have to issue one envelope. And this envelope is easy to use. For example, the items voters need to fill out is in red, and the small amount of information needed from the poll workers is in gray. There's also no longer a separate provisional roster. Everything the registrar of voter needs is on the envelope. If they are a provisional voter, no need to sign any roster. Also, there's no need to remember to write down ballot codes for the voters to take with them. A simple receipt directs the voter on how to access the status of their ballot. The Registrar of Voters has listened to you and incorporated many of these features based on poll worker input. Now let's talk about what a provisional voter is. Provisional voters are voters whose eligibility must be verified before their vote is counted. We're going to go over the various reasons why a voter might have to vote provisionally. There are several types of provisional voters. Voters not found in the combined roster index for example, they may be in the wrong polling place. Voters with the vote by mail indication next to their name in the roster, but do not have their ballot to surrender. Many voters have already been issued a vote by mail ballot before election day, but may or may not have returned their ballot. Voters with the early voter indication next to their name in the roster. During elections, when early voting is conducted, you might see an early voter. Voters with the proof of residence indication next to their name on the roster, but were unable to provide proof. Individuals who are voting for the first time in Orange County need to provide proof of their residence. Voters that provide a different address or name than what is on record in the street index. And finally, voters requesting a different party ballot than what is indicated on the roster. But this only applies during primary elections. Let's listen in as some provisional voters come into the polling place. Hi, I'm here to vote. Well, good morning. What is your first name and last name, please? I'm Lisa Jones. Lisa Jones. Okay. Okay. I have you here listed as a vote-by-mail voter. Uh, yes, I am. I received it in the mail, but I didn't fill it out. Okay. Did you bring your vote-by-mail ballot with you? I'm sorry. I don't know where it is. 
Okay, since you're listed as a vote by mail voter, that means you're going to have to vote provisionally, okay? It's no big deal, very simple. Take you just a few minutes if you'll fill out the white portion of this form, paying particular attention to everything marked in red, okay? Okay. Now, when you're done with that, please bring it to this young lady right here and she'll take care of you from there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, right. my name is Frances Johnson. I don't live in this area and I might be at the wrong place. Okay, let's take a look. Frances Johnson, you said? Yes. Okay. No, I don't, I don't see you on our roster here. I'll tell you what, there's a map right over there on the wall and you can find out where your precinct is. Thanks, I'm a long way from my house, but can I vote here anyways? Uh, actually, yes you can. Uh, tell you what, that means you'll have to vote provisionally. I'm gonna make a little note here on this envelope. And then what I need you to do is fill out the white portion of this envelope with particular emphasis on the parts that are marked in red, okay? Okay. When you're done with that, if you would like to, just bring it to this lady right here. And do you need to update your address, by the way? No, thanks. I haven't moved for 20 years. Okay. Well, when you're done filling that out, just bring that back up here to this nice lady over there, and she'll help you complete the process, okay? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. These two scenarios are the most common types of provisional voters you'll encounter. Processing them is very easy. Once the voter finishes out filling their envelope, they need to bring it back to the ballot clerk and then decide what type of ballot they'd like to cast, either electronic or paper. Now let's take a look at what I wrote at the top of that envelope. The roster clerk will fill out the top section of the provisional ballot envelope boxes one and two and hand the envelope to the voter. The voter will complete their section and return to the ballot clerk. This is the next part of the process, when the voter is issued either an electronic or a paper ballot. Both of them are easy to complete. Let's take a closer look. Hi, I've completed the form. Okay, awesome. We're going to issue your access code. If you hold one second. Okay, could you please sign, print your name first and sign it there for me, please? Great, and I just would need to verify. I need to put your access code number on here. Check this, everything looks, it, um, it's correct. This is your access code when you go into the boot. You'll use this to pull your ballot up. Please leave this right here. When you're finished voting, please come back to me with your envelope. There you go. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. If the voter chooses an electronic ballot, the ballot clerk will make sure the JBC clerk selects the proper precinct and party, if necessary, on the JBC and issue a provisional access code. The JBC clerk should be focused on issuing access codes and the ballot clerk should handle questions and interactions with the voter. On the JBC print screen, choose the arrow next to provisional. Then press the arrow next to yes, making the ballot provisional. Now you may press the arrow next to print and a provisional access code, including the voter provisional stub, will print. Have the voter sign the voter provisional stub. The ballot clerk will place the provisional ballot stub in the envelope with the access code portion visible to the voter. Make sure to check the box designating that the voter received an electronic ballot. Give the voter the provisional envelope, direct him to an open e-booth, and ask him to return to the ballot clerk when he has finished voting. Ah, are you Hi. okay finished? Yes, I am. Okay. This will be your, yours. It tells you right on here. It says check the status of your provisional ballot. You can visit ocvote.com or you can call the toll-free number. Okay, so if you have any questions, okay. so you hold this. We'll give you a nice I voted sticker. This is for you. Thank you. Thank you for voting. Have a nice day. When the voter returns, tear off the receipt of the envelope, which has clear instructions on how a voter can check the status of their ballot. Seal the envelope and deposit it in the ballot box. Now, let's look at what happens if the voter chooses to vote a paper ballot. Are you all finished? Yes, I'd like to vote paper. Okay, not a problem. Okay, excellent. This is your paper ballot. Inside the boot, you'll find a pen, okay? When you're finished with your ballot, please place it inside the envelope, seal it, and bring it back to me when you complete it. Okay, thank you. 
The ballot clerk will choose the proper precinct and party, if necessary, for the voter. Make sure to check the box designating that the voter received a paper ballot. Give the voter the ballot and the provisional envelope. Direct the voter to an open cardboard booth. The ballot clerk will instruct the voter to place his voted ballot inside the provisional envelope and return it back to the ballot clerk. I'm done voting. Here is my ballot and my envelope. And I folded my ballot and put it inside the envelope. Okay. This is your receipt. It's, this is sealed. Uh, this receipt tells you how to find out the status of your ballot if you would like. And here's the I voted sticker and you have a great day. Hey, thank you. When the voter returns, tear off the receipt of the envelope, which has clear instructions on how a voter can check the status of their ballot. Seal the envelope and deposit it in the ballot box. If the voter has also completed a voter registration form because of a change of address, as an example, place the form in the red canvas bag. As you can see, the provisional process is easier. The provisional envelope, as well as the entire process, has been simplified for the convenience of poll workers and voters. Remember, you can always refer to the Polling Place Operations Manual as a resource. Now you know how to process a voter. Let's discuss processing voters with limited English proficiency. Federal law requires Orange County to have instructional materials available in several other languages in addition to English. Under strict guidelines governed by the Federal Voting Rights Act, our office has determined where bilingual poll workers are required. Remember, if you're missing a poll worker on election morning, you must call the help desk. If you don't have a bilingual poll worker at your polling place and you need to assist a voter with limited English proficiency, do your best to process the voter or have the voter call the number on the telephone referral card for bilingual assistance. Hello, sir. Would you like to vote? Um, no English. Here's what we do here. I want you to take this card and call this phone number right here with this phone and they will help you out, okay? You tell them what language you speak. Remember, you must post the Voter's Bill of Rights at the polling place. The information is printed in several languages. Electronic and paper voting is available in any of these languages. Additionally, the voter instructions are posted next to the e-slate and in the cardboard booths in all required languages. It is our duty to provide the best service and support to all voters in Orange County. Remember, your job is to facilitate the voting process and not inhibit it. In addition to serving limited English-speaking voters, we have several resources in assisting voters with disabilities. The Registrar of Voters conducts a thorough analysis of polling places to determine whether they comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Your polling place may be supplied with various tools to accommodate voters with disabilities on Election Day. These tools include ramps, cones, parking signs, and ballot calls. Some items will be delivered to the polling place and are set up by the Registrar of Voters. The inspector will also be provided with instructions on the use of the equipment, including where the item should be placed. Curbside voting is for voters with disabilities who are unable to enter the polling place to vote. To assist the voter in curbside voting, please refer to your polling place operations manual for complete instructions. If a voter at your polling place would benefit from using the Disabled Access Unit, also known as the DAO, direct him to the DAO and answer any questions he may have. Remember, if there's anything you're unsure of, don't hesitate to call the help desk. Be aware that there will be busy periods throughout the day. The majority of voters will come in the morning before work, during their lunch break, or in the evening after work. Keep this in mind when scheduling breaks and lunch times.
Here are additional tips on dealing with long lines. Identify any section where bottlenecking occurs. Share responsibilities. Don't be afraid to pitch in and help the other poll workers. The inspector should place poll workers in their strongest position. If possible, use a greeter to provide updates and instructions to voters in line. Suggest to voters that they mark their sample ballot so they're better prepared. Using the voter direction list, the greeter can write the voter's precinct and line number on the ballot card and hand it to the voter to help speed up the process. Remember, the access code may expire and the ballot clerk must only issue an access code if there's an available e-booth. Although election day can be busy, working as a team you can successfully deal with those busy parts of the day. On election day, you may see poll monitors or members of the media at your polling place. So what is a poll monitor? Poll monitors may work for a particular candidate, party, or organization. They have a right to be at the polling place and their activities most often include checking the updated street indexes to see which voters have already voted. Have you updated the street index lately? Yes, sir. The street index is updated every hour. The latest is right over there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. As for the media, they are allowed to cover the polling place activities. Most poll monitors are visiting polling places to ensure that things are going well. However, if they begin to interfere with polling place operations, you may ask them to leave. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, can you tell me how you voted in this year's election? Uh, Excuse me, sir. Any exit polling must take place 25 feet away from the polling place entrance. Thank you very much. As you already know, it is illegal for anyone to photograph or film the ballots. If a situation occurs involving a poll monitor or the media, call the help desk. The entire day has gone smoothly. We have processed a wide variety of voters, and now it's time to wrap up. Let's go through the poll closing procedures. At 8 p.m., announce both inside and outside that the polls are now officially closed. The polls are now closed. The polls are now closed. Can I still vote? I was stuck in traffic. Uh, I know you just closed, but it's only a few minutes after 8. I'm really sorry, sir, but I simply can't process any more voters. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Thanks for understanding. A poll worker must stand at the end of the line of voters to prevent anyone from joining the line after 8 p.m. Do not begin any closing procedures before the last voter has cast their ballot. Once all voters have finished voting, you may close the polls on the JBC. Use the quick takedown guide to complete the closing procedures in the proper order. Press the close polls button on the JBC. Press the arrow next to continue to confirm that you want to close the polls. Enter the polls close password found in the JBC password envelope, then press the arrow next to accept. Press the arrow next to Print Tally. Print two copies of the tally tape. Both copies must be signed by all poll workers. California law requires that one tally tape be posted outside the polling place for the public. You will use the other to complete the ballot statement and then place it in the JBC main envelope. Disconnect the JBC. Place the gray data cable and the black power cord in the JBC case before placing the JBC inside. Place the completed and signed JBC chain of custody document on top of the JBC inside the case. Before opening the ballot box, you must secure the spoiled ballots, unused paper ballots, and the surrendered vote-by-mail ballots. Be sure to write the required count for each item on the front of the unused ballot bag and seal the bag.
The ballot box may now be unsealed and all voted ballots removed. Enter the totals as indicated on the ballot statement on the front of your combined roster index and place all the voted ballots inside the white voted ballot container. Don't spend extra time counting the ballots more than once. Seal the container and have all the board members sign the tape. The now empty ballot box once again becomes your supply box. Follow the guidelines in the Quick Setup Takedown Guide for repacking supplies. Refer to your supplies repackaging list while packing up. Everything that should be returned in the red canvas bag is listed on the front of the bag. Place the red canvas bag on top of the other supplies in the supply box. The last thing to be placed in the supply box is the voted ballot container. Do not pack your cell phone, your collection center map, and your receipt for sealed container, as you will need these to drop off your supplies. Before breaking down your e-booths, you must remove all printers. First. Certify the placement and integrity of the blue security seals and sign the eBooth chain of custody document for the last time. Place the completed and signed eBooth chain of custody in the plastic sleeve located on the front of your caddy. Every printer must be placed in a blue canvas bag and returned to the collection center with your JBC and supply box. Now that the polls are closed, be sure to return your supplies quickly. Keep your cell phone with you until returning all supplies at your collection center. A second poll worker must accompany or follow the inspector to the collection center to witness the return of the supplies. Hi. Hi, can you pop your trunk please? Great, do you have your receipt for sealed container? Thank you. I can have you sign here. Thank you. This is for you. Thank you. Do you have your cell phone? Great, thank you. Have a good night. Thanks a lot. At every step along the way, feel free to consult your polling place operations manual or contact our help desk. Hi, thanks for voting. I hope that you enjoyed our poll worker training video. You know, individual elections are like butterflies. They have a short but glorious life. But that short life oftentimes includes processing more than one million voters, a complex operation. Our office will continue evolving to adapt to the ever-changing environment around us. I'm proud to lead a team that is dedicated to making sure elections run smoothly right here in Orange County, despite these inevitable changes. With more registered voters than 21 states, we have a big mission on our hands. But with the kindred spirits of thousands of volunteers like you, among the best in the country, it's a task we're ready to take on. Jim Casey, the founder of UPS, once said, great service can best be defined as the sum of many little things done well. That's an excellent example of a well-run polling place, a collection of many things done well. Thank you for your dedication, passion, and skill and above all, thank you for volunteering with us.